Greetings and welcome back to Room 303 in Freshman English. We turn now in your My Perspectives volumes to page 98-99. We have a poetry collection here. We're going to work with first Roberta Hills Whitman's uh, Morning Talk, and then we'll look at uh, Gregory Dodgkin's um, Immigrant Picnic. Let's first of all work with uh, Morning Talk. Uh, background information on page 99. Uh, we'll start with this observation. The songbird, commonly referred to as the North American robin, is actually a thrush. It was named robin by the Europeans who settled the Americas because it looked like the European robin. The two birds are not actually related. Now, that, while that seems kind of silly, this simple fact actually is going to play a, a key role in understanding this poem. By the way, let's meet Roberta Hill uh, Whiteman, born in 1947 a nationally recognized poet, scholar, member of the United Nation of Wisconsin. Born in uh, Barbu, uh, Wisconsin, she holds an MFA in creative writing and a PhD in American studies. Her doctoral dis dissertation centered on her grandmother and inspiration, uh, Dr. Lily Rose Minoka, uh, one of the first Native American physicians. Hill's work draws on her experience as a Native American woman and on Oneida history. In addition to two critically acclaimed poetry collections, she's written a biography of her grandmother. Now, let's turn to the poem itself on page 101. Let's do a reading of the poem, and then we'll uh, come back to do a bit of annotative work, all right? Morning Talk by Roberta Hill Wyman for Melissa L. Whiteman. Hi, guy, said I to a robin, perched on a pole in the middle of the garden. Pink and yellow firecracker zinnias, rough green leaves of broccoli, and deep red tomatoes on dying stems frame his still presence. I've heard you're not the real robin. Bird watchers have agreed, I said. The real robin lives in England. They claim you are misnamed and that we ought to call you a red-breasted thrush because you are indigenous. He fluffed up. Am I not just Coco? He cried. That persistent warrior who carries warmth northward every spring? He seemed so young, his red belly a bit light, and his wings still faded brown. He watched me untangling the hose to water squash. Look who's talking, he chirruped. Your people didn't come from Europe or even India. The turtles say you're a relative to red clay on this great island. Drops of crystal water sparkled on the squash. Indigenous, he teased as he flew by. Now, what makes this uh, poem so fascinating is the way in which we play a game with words and images and dialogue. This is one of those old traditions that take us all the way back to the great philosopher Plato and his use of the dialogue, exchanging information back and forth. Notice that we begin, first of all, with the speaker in the poem saying to the robin, you're not the real robin because you really don't come from here, even though you are supposedly indigenous and all of that. That is to say, there's a confusion about your identity. Now, of course, we can begin to realize why a poem like Morning Talk is going to be placed in Unit 1, where we're spending so much time talking about what makes an American a country of immigrants who is actually the indigenous peoples of this country. All of that is obviously being played with here. Notice at line 16, the bird now is going to respond, and he's going to say, you know, using, using the, the language of Iroquois for Robin, he says, I'm the persistent warrior who carries warmth northward every spring, right? Uh, of course, he watched the speaker untangle the hose. Look who's talking again, he comes back. Your people didn't come from Europe or even India, and to that degree, why are you called then Native Americans or even Indians, right? The turtles say you're a relative to red clay on this great island. And then the drops of crystal water sparkled on the splash, on the squash, indigenous, he teased, as he flew away. Now, what's really going on in this poem? Let's work with it now at level two and three. Of course, we have a profound insight here, don't we? That is to say, we often misunderstand the powerful cultures that are a part of America and the peoples that are a part of those cultures. We can marginalize them to obviously our own demise, I think this poem is suggesting. That is to say, 
what is it that makes people special? Their value. And notice here the idea that if you're not indigenous, then there's something wrong with you in some way. And of course, we have a bit of humor as well. Let's jot that one down at 2B. Note the bit of humor as well. Uh, indigenous, he, the bird teases as he flies away. Um, at 3A, relate this poem to other titles that we've already worked with in Unit 1 for you. And then finally at 3B, what is it? that is most important in your estimation about being an American and identifying as an American. What for you are the lessons that you're learning through te uh, text like morning talk as well? And the ability to respect, there's our key word, right? Respect and appreciate all different understandings of what it means to be an American. Well, I hope this will read you to more of Roberta Hill's uh, amazing poetry. Thank you.